In this video, I'm going to show you how I managed to create an interactive dashboard like this with the help of DeepSeq R1 large language model in literally under 15 minutes. Now, as you may have heard by now, news about the uprising of this DeepSeq AI model by a Chinese research lab is taking the internet by storm even as we speak, as it's receiving a wide spectrum of reactions from various parts of the world. And I just wanted to test out its capability to develop a dashboard like this. Now, before we get to the details, I'm just going to walk you through the final output. And this is showing the distribution of population across various states of the US. And with a drop down menu like this, you can select a specific year like this. And the population figures will be displayed on a choropleth map. As you can see right over here, when you hover your mouse pointer over a state, what you can see is basically the name of the state or its abbreviation and the corresponding population figures. And from this color scale itself, you probably would be able to get an idea about the population distribution immediately by looking at this map, which states happen to have the highest populations, which states happen to have the lowest and the ones in between. And not only that, if you go ahead and click on any of these states, for example, let's say on Texas, you can actually see a line graph like this, which basically shows the population, the long-term population trend from 1900s all the way up until well, 2024, as you hover your mouse point along this line graph, you can see the year as well as the corresponding population figure accordingly. And this is available for basically any of the states. All you have to do is just go ahead and click on the state like this. And quite interesting because for some states, we do have the information from as early as 1900s. But if you look at a state like Alaska or Hawaii, well, you can see that the information is basically available only from 1950. So all of that has been taken into account when creating this dashboard. And if you ask me how long it took me to actually create this dashboard from scratch, from virtually having no data at all, it literally took under 15 minutes. And are you guys curious to see how I managed to do that? Let's find out. So first of all, we need to find a relevant population census data set for this. And for that, I just went over to DeepSeek and asked whether it can help me find a US state level annual population data set for me, preferably from something like a public GitHub repository. And uh, I just mentioned that I would like the data set to cover the population figures from 1900s all the way up until 2024. So as for the request, it provided me with a number of different data sources, including a couple of uh, key sources such as the US Census Bureau, NHGIS and a number of other sources. And I found a direct uh, GitHub link to this uh, Josh data GitHub repository from which I was able to find this CSV right over here. And if I go ahead and open that up, you can basically see the data set for each state. Well, for this particular state, it's starting from 1950 and we have the population figure right over here. And uh, it's going all the way up until 2024. And then it jumps on to the next state. And for Alabama, it seems like we have the data from 1900s and so on. So this seems like exactly what I'm looking for, an annual population data set covering a huge temporal range. So if I click over here on row, I could go ahead and copy this link right over here. And I could access this data set directly without even having to download it. If I were to use a library like pandas in Python by providing just this link. And that's precisely what I'm doing uh, over here. I'm just going to import the pandas library and then read in that data set into a variable called df and that's going to be pandas.readcsv and all I have to do is just provide the web link right over here and since we didn't have the headers specified in the original data set we're going to have to specify that the first column is going to be the state followed by that the year and the population figure so I'm just going to add another argument called names and the first column will be state then year followed by that population and after that, we can just go ahead and run this by selecting, well, run the selected cell. And that should pull the data out from this GitHub repository and sort of save it into a variable called df. All right, now with that information in hand, I'm going to go ahead and instruct DeepSeek saying that I have an annual population data set for every US state up to the year 2024. And I'm going to ask her using this data set, how can I create an interactive choropleth type map? 
to visualize this data. And in addition to that, I'm also going to specify that when I click, I should be seeing a line graph appearing right below the map, showing the population trend over the years for that particular state. So let's go ahead and provide that instruction. And for this, I'm not really going to turn on this web search option because I don't really see the necessity of doing that, but I'm definitely going to leave this deep think R1 model turned on just so that I could see how it actually goes through that decision-making process in which a logical reasoning is applied before it spits out the final uh, output. So let's just go ahead and run this. Now, if I inspect uh, what sort of a thought process it went through before it spit out the final output, you can see that it uh, directly assumes that I have a CSV with column state, year and population, which actually happens to be the case. It's setting up the Dash app, writing the callback functions, it's talking about styling. So you can see that it's basically creating some synthetic data, which I'll probably be replacing with my original data set. However, when I try to run this, I actually came across an issue where it says that Jupyter Dash is actually a deprecated library. So I had to specifically go ahead and instruct uh, DeepSeek that Jupyter Dash is uh, deprecated and to use the Dash library instead. So it took my feedback into account and it provided me with the reason why it decided to go with Jupyter Dash, but now it's reverting back to just the Dash module, which is exactly what I wanted. And now if you look at the structure of the code, you can obviously see that uh, it's importing the required libraries. Right over here, it's still creating the synthetic data set. And if you try to see what's going on in the code, you can see that uh, it's importing the required libraries. And in this part, it's basically creating a synthetic data set. But then I run into this conundrum of DeepSeek suggesting me to use the FIPS codes instead of actually using the actual state abbreviations. And if you come down and look at this function written to update the coroplet map, you can see that for locations it's using the FIPS codes, but you could actually use the state abbreviations for this. Not to say that you couldn't use FIPS codes, but it's not really necessary. So what I did was I went down and said do not use FIPS codes, just make use of the state abbreviations as Plotly can recognize them. And I just simply duplicated this function and specified that I want the locations to be recognized based on the state abbreviation, just like this. And it took that into account. And now you can see if you were to look at this particular function that's used for creating the coroplet map, the locations are recognized based on the state abbreviation. And if you were to look at the structure of the code, we create the map using this function, and then we go ahead and initialize the Dash app. And right over here, what it's doing, it's defining the app layout. And it's quite interesting because I actually asked DeepSeek to display all of my data on a coroplet map. But as you can imagine, I have data covering a number of years. So how exactly would you display such a huge data set just in one map? Well, the only option is to actually add something like a slider where you could uh, click on a button to select a specific year because we have years ranging from 1900s all the way up until 2024. So when you click on specific button, then it can actually go ahead and pull the data just corresponding to that particular year and show it on a static map. And to do that, you need to design a slider in this app layout. Now, another way of doing that would be to actually have a drop-down menu. So that's that's also another approach. But it's quite nice to see that DeepSeek was intelligent enough to recognize that it, it's going to need a slider like this. So it did set up that uh, slider right over here. And what you see over here is basically the coroplet map. And right at the bottom, what we have is the line graph, which I wanted to see as well. So you can see the three elements basically specified in this app layout section. And followed by that, what we have is basically the two functions to sort of update the coroplet map when we select a specific year. And if I were to go ahead and click on a specific state, then it's going to want to update the corresponding line chart as well as I showed you guys at the beginning of this video. So all of that is being specified. And additionally, you can instruct the user how to actually use this dashboard. And at the same time, you can adjust things like appearance characteristics of the line chart as well. All right, guys, from a high level, looks like the structure that I'm looking for is there. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this entire code, use an empty cell and just control V it. And we're not going to install uh, any of these libraries. And the thing that I'm going to get rid of is basically this part right over here, where you can see that it's specifying the states, the years, and it's coming up with some random population data, which I don't really need. And the nice thing is that it's assigning that to a data frame called DF and I happen to be doing the same thing as well. So since I have already run this cell, 
I don't really need to worry about changing the name of my variables either. And if everything works well, when I run this cell, let's go ahead and see what we can get. And as you can see what we get right here is the US population dashboard. And we have a nice choroplate map uh, right over here. So understandably, you can see that uh, we have a long slider, which seems to be starting from 1900s all the way up until 2024. And right now it's saying that it's showing the US population by state for year 2024. So if I hover my mouse pointer over any of these states, without clicking on them just yet, you can see that I'm able to see the state abbreviation as well as the corresponding population figure. So based on this color scale alone, you can see that uh, in 2024, we can expect the highest populations to be in states like California, Texas, 31 million, over here it's 39 million, and the lowest to be in states like Alaska, 740,000, Wyoming, 587,000, and so on. So you can see how the color scale basically applies and it gives us an instant picture of how the population distribution happens to be across the US for year 2024. Now, since DeepSeek decided to go ahead with a slider, what I can do is I can actually click on maybe the button like this, and now it's showing me the population for year 1977. So if I go all the way back to, well, my first data point should be 1900. Well, you can see that certain states actually get sort of grayed out like Alaska and Hawaii, because if you can recall the original data set right from here, the data starts from 1950 for this particular state, Alaska, for it doesn't really have any data for 1900. That's why it's getting grayed out. And the same happens to be the case for Hawaii as well, as we can see over here. But for the states where we have the population figures, you can see that it changes accordingly. If I click over here once, you can see that it gets updated. So in the 1900s, the highest population seems to be around this area, 7 million, Pennsylvania about 6.9. And when you come to the 1950s, you can see that California is slowly creeping up in terms of its uh, population, 15 million or so. And uh, if you click on 2010, well, you can see how the figures change. Now, just below this, you do see an empty, empty chart. And according to my instructions, if I were to go ahead and click on a specific state, let's say like Florida, if I wanted to see the long-term population trend, I should be seeing that as soon as I click on that particular state. So you can see the population trend for Florida is like this. And this red color line basically signifies which year's data we are looking at uh, on the map. That happens to be 2010. So if I change the slider, you can see that it basically drops down. And at the same time, if I go ahead and click on these states, you can see how the line chart basically varies. So if I wanted to see the population variations in Alaska, I probably have to select a year like this. And then if I go ahead and click on Alaska like this, you can see the data is actually starting from 1950 and it's available all the way until 2024. And as you hover your mouse pointer over this graph, you can see the corresponding population figures for each year like this. Now, even though this slider seems to be a cool option, the text underneath, it's all sort of jumbled up. And the reasons are understandable because you're actually trying to kind of squash quite a lot of things into a small space. So I thought, hey, instead of a slider, what if we actually go with a, with a drop down option where I would just click on a menu and it's just going to list me down all the years. And it's more clean if I can actually select the year that I would like to view the data for using such a drop down menu so that I won't really have all this text cluttering up uh, an entire section of my dashboard like this. So what did I do? I went back to DeepSeek and asked, instead of slider, can we use a drop down menu? And sure enough, it gave me the entire code again. And if I just head over to the specific section where we designed the app layout, so instead of dcc.slider, now we have a drop down menu specified right over here. I could actually just go ahead and copy the entire thing, head back and well, just clean this part out and I could run this again. And when I do that, you can immediately see the difference. We no longer have the slider right over here, but instead what we have is a drop down menu like this from which we can, well, go all the way back to 1900s and make the selections. And similar to what we did, if I just go ahead and select 
or click on a state like this, it's actually going to give me the corresponding uh, line graph in this manner. Now, when it comes to the appearance of this map, you actually do have a wide variety of options as well. If you head over to this page, built in a continuous color scales in Python for Plotly, if you scroll down just a little bit, well, you can see a bunch of different uh, options when it comes to specifying colors. For example, let's say if you would like to have this sort of a rainbow type appearance, what you should be doing is you should head back to the block of code where you define the core plate, the creation function, and under this color continuous scale, you can specify, well, rainbow. And now if you go ahead and try to run this, you can see how this sort of colors uh, look on the map. So you actually have a bunch of different color scales to play around and find the one that uh, suits you the best. I would say that this is a bit too vibrant for my liking. I'm just going to go back to this hairline option, which is what it was before. Now, in case if you want to view this dashboard on your browser rather than through a Jupyter notebook like this, well, you can do that as well. If you were to simply copy this entire code into a text file like this and, and save it as a .py file, a Python file. And if you were to run it uh, directly using your command line, you'd be able to open up the Dash app on a browser like this. And again, you can go ahead and make the appropriate selections. Click on any of the states that you would like to view this data for, like this, and interactively obtain information regarding the population distribution as well as the overall trend in the population change. Every state that you're interested in seeing this information for. All right, guys, with that, I'm going to wrap up this video. Let me know what you think about DeepSeek's approach to creating this kind of a dashboard. And of course, we had to provide our inputs at a couple of steps, but I don't think they were, but I don't think it's because the outputs were drastically terrible or anything like that. We just wanted things to have been done in a very specific way. And according to our instructions, it basically managed to give out a refined code, which we managed to get to work just in a matter of few minutes.